test thing out, Dougie. Okay, Dougie. All right. I got some. Uh, Tell us where we are, Coach. I guess they can see for themselves. The famous John Wooden. The, the world statue. famous John Wooden the, statue. The, the most successful uh, sports coach in the history of sports coaches. He won the national championship 10 out of 12 years. Look at that run. Which is 1948 crazy. to 1975. Yeah. Oh my so God. He, uh, Talk about years. eras. Almost a 30 year run. <laughs> totally yeah. different worlds. <laughs> 1948 to 1975. And he was, uh, you know, he was like the creator of great men. So like he's got these guys that just like. He was like their guru, and they still right. talk about him every and day. The, and these guys are gurus now, like yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, I have to hear... Uh, uh, was he originally from L.A.? No, he's from Indiana. He's, from a, Indiana. Three, he's a three-time All-American basketball player. From Indiana from Purdue, University? Oh, from Purdue. From Purdue. The, the Boilermakers? And uh, he uh, was, wasn't that tall, but he was three-year All-American. That's when you can only play three years. Hmm. And then he came here and he had a so-so run. And then he got uh, Kareem. Uh, Lou Alcindor he at got the time. Lou Alcindor. I was at Lou Alcindor's first game he ever played as a freshman. Wow. They played the varsity they killed. <laughs> I believe it. And then um, he played and his record, his record for, I think he lost two games in three years or something. And they changed the, uh, the rules of the game, they, they banned right. slam dunks right, because, of because of him. And then, and then they got, uh, after that, they got uh, Walton. Uh -huh. And yeah. Walton, I heard uh, on an interview yesterday, I mean, he's... Little... Bill Walton was the other guy I was trying to think of who is like a guru now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's, a, well, but, I, but, yeah. Oh, look, we, we got the popo. They must be uh, throwing people off the... Uh, the track. Off the track, yeah. If you're not R O two T C get off at get out of Drake Stadium. But anyway, uh, Bill Walton talks a lot and he's usually yeah. off the wall sort of crazy, but I listened to him yesterday and this guy was smart. He's sharp, wow. yeah. Oh he's a smart dude. Wow. I mean he, he I mean they just no one said anything. He just like went on and on and on and it was really interesting and he's like positive and man, he was he was impressive. Is Luke Walton still coaching up in? Uh, he was in Golden Sac State, he's wasn't he? He was in Sacramento. Oh, Sacramento. Okay. He, he was a gold. He was a Golden State. Came to the Lakers. Yeah. Lakers fired him. Right. And um, so well, it must he, be a graduation. Yeah. Right. It's around that time. Oh yeah, there's a bunch. So bunch UCLA. Of uh, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful campus. It's really beautiful. And they got so, such facilities here. How you doing? Okay. Los Angeles Police. Yeah, so, uh, Johnson, uh, Johnson, uh, he went here. Milan Tiff. Milan Tiff is still Tri working out here. Triple jumper. 73 years old. He can still compete with the present collegians. He's real good. But, but Mr. Loeffler. He can jump rope for, uh, <laughs> what, eight minutes? Five minutes was the longest. Five minutes and 18 seconds or something. something That's, like that. That's a good, good memory. Good memory. That was a yeah. few, a little while ago. Well, we should start, Doug. So All that, right. Did that you way. guys, so um, did you guys see the boxing last night? I got messed up. I, I watched it the night before. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that this was his brother fight. And it was the real, but I got to say one thing. I watched the, the, the Nuri fight that was old. Right. It, it was really good against this other undefeated guy who, who did well. But Eddie Reynoso was in the corner. Yeah. And I'll say that he is not as good, but close to Dean Hamilton in the corner. Dean's the best by far. Yeah. And Eddie Ro Reynoso is the first guy I've ever seen that even you could put in the same level. So yeah. Not quite, but almost. He's, yeah, he's up he, there. He was good. Yeah. But and no uh, now good. Lewis, now you know Lewis Neri only used, only worked with Eddie Reynoso for that last fight. That was his debut at 122 pounds. And after that performance, he was fighting an undefeated kid, but a prospect and an unheralded, unheralded prospect at that. And uh, based on that performance, the ring ratings committee 
did not allow Lewis Neri, who was a champion at, at 118, to enter Ring Magazine's 122 pound rankings. Right. So when he fought last night against uh, Brandon Figueroa, yeah. um, according to Ring Magazine, Figueroa was the only rated junior featherweight because we rated Brandon Figueroa number four at 122 pounds um, behind Akhmadaliev, behind Danny Roman, who also fought on that card and looked really good, uh, and behind number three, uh, Stephen Fulton. Okay. Um, having said that, and I think you know this, Tom, Neri was the favorite. Maybe he was the betting I favorite, the or favorite, yeah. maybe a media favorite. I don't know. I asked JP, and uh, he wasn't. He, he didn't who bear, who did JP that. bet on? He didn't bet it on that. It was a that. tough fight to pick. I thought I was, but here's what I'll say: I was rooting for Figueroa. Okay. I like Figueroa. Nice looking kid, humble kid, uh, bilingual from Texas, <laughs> and um, kind of like his his older brother Omar was at, at lightweight. He's big and rangy, and but he likes to fight on the inside. Oh, that was Omar Figueroa's brother. Yeah, oh, okay. it's Omar. Yeah, Brandon is Omar Figueroa's younger brother. Um, and uh, he, uh, he has a habit of smothering himself. He's kind of a switch hitter. It's kind of awkward. He's what I would say is awkwardly aggressive. And so for the first three or four rounds, he's just taking the fight and wanting to mix it up with Neri. And Neri's getting the better of him. He's landing the better punches. But he was smart, and I guess this was their strategy. They knew that Neri is not well conditioned. Who trained him for the fight last night? His his original trainer, who's not very well known, and probably for good reason. Okay. Yeah, sure. There's so a, there's Doug Fisher in action yeah. with uh, Sam Garcia boxing, a Dean Hamilton legacy. Yep. Don Hamilton legacy. Sorry. Don Hamilton. <laughs> Dean Hamilton is yeah. is continuing oh, the your, legacy. Uh, you super. That's your super rare. That's right. Frazier versus uh, Ali. Yep. Nice. Fifty year anniversary. Uh, this past, and uh, is that a jacket uh, for uh, Eloy Perez? This is yeah, the team, late, the late team, Eloy uh, Perez. Team Perez. That's right. So I had the honor of uh, sharing the ring with nice. for one night. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, you know what? For like three or four rounds, if you if you're following boxing Twitter, everyone's saying Figueroa is fighting the wrong fight because huh. the kids is tall. The kids as tall as like a junior welterweight. Okay. He's like five nine, five ten, long arms. And he's, he's inside and he's, you know, he's awkward swinging the punches. And Neri's punches are, are cleaner for about three rounds. But then by the fifth round, Neri is tired. Neri's punching like this. Oh, uh, so he wore him down. <laughs> he's like this. Neri's this little stocky dude. And then uh, and then you can see it by round six. Neri's looking woozy. And huh. and uh, in, the, in the seventh round, Figueroa gets him with the left to the, to the body. Hmm. And uh, Neri, you know, does that whole pause and then turns and then goes down and he can't get up. Is that there? And he left. Up? He actually, he left the ring and told his people, I don't feel good oh, wow. and went straight to the hospital. Oh. So I hope he's okay. I don't like Neri because he's missed weight way too many times for important he's had fights. lots of weight issues. And he's yeah. one of them dudes who misses weight and just kind of shrugs like, yeah, and. Right. You know what I mean? And, He's banned and, in uh, Japan, right? Lifetime ban. Yeah, the Japan Boxing Commission gave him a lifetime ban. Probably uh, in part because he beat their champion and then tested positive for a banned right, substance. Right, right. And then they and had, didn't uh, make weight. Right, then the mandatory rematch, he, he, I mean, he tested like four, clean, four but then pounds, he came in like way overweight like and then even pounds. rehydrated even more yeah. for the fight and then annihilated their guy again who then retired and they were like, we shouldn't have let this happen. Right. This is this is an outrage. This is dangerous. Right. And they and they banned him for life. Which I, you know what, I, I kind of I commend them. That's a, that's taking a hard line, because um, you know it, it shouldn't be the way guys miss weight these days. They just miss weight and say right. whatever. I'll pay a fee. I'll pay a fine. And that so was what? like Danny Jacobs again and the second day weigh-in against Triple G. It's like so what. You know, he didn't even pay. Fair. He didn't even pay a fine because of uh, it. Just right. didn't get sanctioned for the IBF. Uh, right. He so he made just the, basically he made the all, weight he, the first all he did was time. just say, I don't second, care. I don't care if the IBF. Right. I don't care if the right. IBF strips because me. Because Triple G had those yeah. other titles. Right. Right. Yeah. Triple G had the people, IBF, the WBA, and the WBC. WBC yeah. Wow. And the IBO and and yeah, people under, people underestimate how big of a difference the weight makes. You know, they well, that was they the focus biggest I've on, ever seen, Danny. 
they focus on PEDs, but right. you know, having 10 and 15 pound weight advantage is a huge advantage. Even like we saw what Scott Quigg did with that. And he you did know, serious damage yeah. to Oscar Valdez, his and, jaw. Right. And how uh, about how about um, the late Arturo Gatti against Joey Gamash? Right. That was he put on a, a crazy on amount a big, of weight yep. and just destroyed poor Joey. I was there. Oh, that at was, that fight, that was yeah. twenty-one years ago uh -huh. at Madison Square Garden. He was he was outgunned for sure. Yeah. And then the IBF. So the IBF changed that rule because of the Triple G yeah. Danny Jacobs fight for what Danny because Danny had agreed to the second day weigh in and then. It was one thing if you said, okay, I'm not going to fight it, and then both guys, you know, gain as much weight, then that's fine. Yeah. But when you say you're going to fight for it, and then you don't show up to the weigh-in knowing that you're not going to uh, yeah. weigh in. And the weigh-in was early anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you so, know what I mean? They had a long time to rehydrate. So yeah, the IBF changed. On that fight too. Well, the, the, the Gotti Gamash, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. The uh, IBF changed the rule because of that. And if you remember the week before it happened with David Lemieux, uh, he was involved in the fight. The same thing, IBF and the, the other guy didn't do the second day weigh-in. It was exactly the same circumstances. And uh, Was that when Lemieux fought uh, Curtis Stevens? Stevens, right. And uh, Lemieux didn't do that second day weigh-in. Yeah, and, and he was and giant. Blasted, you could see it. Blasted yeah. out Stevens. Yeah. Um, Not fair. And, and that was a huge weight advantage yeah. for them also. So right. we should we should start, Coach. All right, Coach, you got some. You got some. Uh, uh, I'll pretend to skip rope. We got the John Wooden statue here in the background. Okay. All right. So the, okay. So all these guys fought the same guy. All right. I want to know their nicknames. Okay. Right. Tom, you chime in. I'm gonna you, give okay. you. Guess I'm gonna me. give you one here. So maybe. Oh shit! I got so many to get on the first. So one. so you're looking for the nicknames of the guys. And then we try to guess who, of, who's uh, their common okay. opponent. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, I want to shit every I mean, one Sometimes of these. they have multiple com you're, common opponents. You're going to get this on the first one. I, yeah. I mean, every single guy here. I'm not feeling that clear today, so who knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you this one. And I had a decent night's sleep. I don't know. I have no excuse, but sometimes yeah. my brain doesn't okay, work. And you got your second uh, shot of the vaccine. I did. So Doug Fisher is fully vaccinated. I got two shots of Moderna. Okay, <laughs> just, this was his la the guy's last fight. Last yeah, fight of his yeah, career. This is the career. guy he fought in his last fight. The guy. Yeah, in the question. guy. I'm saying. I want to know this guy's nickname. I want to know when the fight was. The guy he fought was Scott Sigmoa. Sigmoa. Scott Sigmoa. S I G M O A. Huh. That, does, oh, no, that name is S I G M O N. I think. Sig Sigmund? Oh, Sig yeah. Sigmund. Scott Sigmund. I remember, I remember that name. I remember Scott Sigmund. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. And this fighter, this was his last fight. The, the last guy he fought was Scott Sigmund. Oh. Well, wait, well, was wait, it, was it Scott? Vinny Pazienza? No. What weight is Sigmund? 160? 68? Yeah, he's up in yeah. the middleweights. Yeah. Uh, middleweight sometimes fights heavier than that. Yeah. Hmm. He's an opponent type dude. Probably from the what's Midwest. His, what's his nickname? <laughs> Sigmund, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Cujo. Cujo. Yeah, I have Cujo. I have heard that. Okay, yeah. What's that mean? Well, it's it's referencing that dog from the Stephen King. You got model. it. Wow. Yeah. And the movie. It was it was a pretty good movie. It's a rabid Saint Bernard. Yeah, a rabid Saint Bernard. <laughs> okay, there you go. Scott Sigmund. <laughs> Learn something new. Scott Sigmund every... fight last. Was it Roy Jones Jr.? It was. Bam! Uh, Doug did get it. Bam! Doug did get it on the Second first. Second one. Hey. But Roy could fight again though. Roy's never. No, oh no, I don't want him to quit. Yeah, ever, no, he, you know, I guess the, the Tyson fight doesn't fight. count because that was an exhibition. Yeah, that was. So, right. So why, why did I bring up Roy Jones's? Well, he was on the broadcast, the uh, DAZN broadcast no, for, for Canelo Alvarez. No, and, and and that's right, he was on the broadcast. BJ Saunders. Oh, there's the anniversary of him getting knocked out by Antonio Tarver. I mean, the biggest. And I was there, and what a shock. The God, biggest shock, shock of my life. I mean, that is like crazy. All because he took coach, off that weight. Coach, wave. coach, there were 10,000 people in the Mandalay Bay Event Center for that mm -hmm. fight. I would say 20 minutes after the fight, there were still 8,000 people in yeah. their seats on their phones yeah. calling like, people saying, believe. Roy just got knocked out. No, really, Roy lost, Roy. Uh, I got up, like I, I, was, I was on deadline, right? I'm writing it up and I, read, I wrote it up real quick. And you didn't get it. talked into going to that fight. And the, yeah, because I was, because, because, because Josephine had been born um, April 19th, so it wasn't even a full month. Right. So I was like, nah, I gotta stay home because I got a newborn baby. Right. And, and right. Kim was like, 
Doug, that's a cop out. You've already missed two big fights. I don't care. Tell Nina you're going to be back soon. We're just going to drive up the day of or something like that. Or we'll be gone two days. This is what you do, Doug. It is what it is. This is, is what, what we is. do. He gave me a whole speech, and I'm like, all right, man. Okay, I'm doing it. And so we went, and uh, Roy gets knocked out. And Steve grabs me. This is why you gotta be here. This is why you gotta be here. And he knew what was gonna happen too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause uh, Steve was friends with uh, Tarver's manager at the time, and he had actually flown down to, to Florida, oh, he went to the where training Tarver camp? was training with Buddy McGirt, huh. and they were working on this combination on over point. and over. Cause Buddy could see certain things. Yeah. Buddy right. had the eyes to see, like, you know, Roy's Roy's phenomenal but there are technical flaws. There's certain things that he does wrong because he could get away with them when he was in his 20s. Yeah. You know, by this time, Roy's 35 years old. Hmm. He's heavier, slowing down. Right. He's complacent, right. getting complacent. You, you know what I mean? Muscle. And yeah, well, see, here's the thing. I was one of these guys saying that Roy's not invincible. Roy can be beat. People would be like, you're crazy. Nobody beats him in the history of boxing. And I remember in the mailbag, I named a bunch of guys. I said, from, from like light heavyweight, to cruiserweight, I said these guys could probably beat him. Huh. And Tarver was one of the guys that oh, I mentioned. Good call. And people lost their minds. They said Tarver sucks. He's terrible. The only guy that I mentioned that they were more offended um, about than Tarver was uh, I said Jeremy Williams. If Williams can make 190, he'd knock out Roy. Because hmm. Roy, because Williams, Williams, Williams was a heavyweight yeah. who fought as a light heavyweight as an amateur, right. and he was trying to make cruiserweight at the time. Hmm. And he would have, if the cruiserweight limit back then was 200 pounds, he would have made it. He would have yeah. been able to make it, but right. he couldn't make 190. He huh. could get down to about 195, and then he was weak, right? Huh. So I said, you know what? I bet you if Williams could make 190, and if Roy fought at 190, Williams would knock him out because Williams huh. could hurt heavyweights with his power. Sure. That yeah. was my thinking. Yeah. Maybe I was out of my mind, but whatever. But I, I mentioned five guys who I thought could beat Roy Jones Jr., and Tarver was one of them. Now. I was at the, the first fight, and Roy looked terrible. He looked, it just didn't look right at the weigh in. He looked great. That was after and he, he struggled came in down. That fight. That's so when he first dropped weight. all that weight. Now, for the rematch, supposedly he had kept his weight down and he was healthy, and he did look a lot better at the weigh in. Hmm. So I still wasn't sure if Tarver could beat him. And even, and I don't think I did pick Tarver for the, for the rematch, but even if I did, I, I wasn't picking him by second round knockout. It was a shocker. Hmm. It was like, it was surreal. Seeing about, Roy go down and then get up. And, how about when Glenn Johnson knocked him out? That well, that was just big. scary. That was scary. I remember I wrote, like, Roy has a lot of pride, you know, but in this game, pride will get you killed. And I remember I wrote that in my, in my, in my, my post-fight story. And um, this lady emailed me, just, just copied and pasted that line or that paragraph and said, she said, truer words have never been said. Wow. And it was Gerald McClellan's sister. Huh. Oh. She was like, yeah, dude, for real. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I was like, wow. We're here at the UCLA campus. Things are opening up again. Yeah. We had kids uh, skateboarding uh, here's the soccer the field earlier. And, uh, <laughs> There's the soccer field. Some of them There's a uh, the little boy is Drake Stadium. He's running around. He's fine. There you go. Hey, give us a few, <laughs> before we wrap up, Coach, okay. give us a few names. Okay. You know, but having said that, if you saw those back-to-back -back knockouts, you were like, Roy's done forever. And he was done as an elite fighter. But then he continued his career for like and 15 how about more now? years. And how about he was, today? It's great. He, he fought, he fought no, Mike Tyson. He's, he's clear. Yeah. He's Ooh, healthy. He's clearer now than he was then. <laughs> you know what? He's, he's <laughs> yeah. more articulate now. Yeah. Isn't his, that amazing? How's his posture? It's like a superhero. But his body, he's got so much guy. muscle on his body, he is kind of like superhuman. It's not normal. Do you ever look at, at Prime Roy Jones when he's punching? If you, you see oh, the yeah, way his the bicep, bicep sure. with yeah. balls, it's like, yeah. that's not a human bicep. Yeah. Like he's a yeah, little very... little bit higher on the evolutionary scale, <laughs> physically speaking. He went through he all was very athletically gifted. all had good records. Sure. One after the other. Well, he was, okay. he was I that remember weird when he pound fought. for pound guy that was so also a I'm going to give you these guys. I just want their nicknames. Okay. Quickly. I remember when he fought Eric. Johnson. Oh, Reggie Johnson. What's his nickname? Yeah, what's Reggie's name? Oh, Dougie. Shit. Huh. What was Reggie Johnson's? I used to, I was friends with Reggie. Yeah, I, I remember Reggie too. Remember he used to work out at the L, LA Boxing sure. Club? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah Man, Manny Robles' father trained him for a while. Huh. 
Sweet. And Manny Robles' his father didn't speak English. <laughs> oh, sweet! That was it. Yeah, sweet. Sweet, ready, Johnson. Yeah, yeah. How about Mon? You know this one for sure. Montel Griffin. Montel Griffin. Ice. Montel Griffin from um, Chicago, and uh, Reggie Johnson from uh, some part of Texas. Yeah, I, I remember. Austin, I remember uh, all those. Tate. Thomas Tate. He was. Uh, wasn't he? I Ice T. You got it. Ice T. And how about... Uh, hey, Roy took out Thomas Tate like that. How about uh, James, <laughs> like, like James Tony? How about this one? I don't know if you get this one. James Percy Harris. Out. Percy Harris? He was real tall. I remember that. Percy Harris. Bernard Hopkins. What's his nickname? I just know he was six foot four. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy, mercy. Uh, mercy Shouldn't mercy. it be no mercy, Percy? <laughs> yeah. How about uh, Bryant... Um, Bannon, Bryant Bannon, uh, bulletproof. You know that one. Uh, actually, Bryant Bryant Bannon was not bulletproof. Yeah. He had bullets lodged in his body. Yeah. Huh. yeah. We had a we, we had, had an a rough opponent. background. He's, he was a Philly guy. He's BB. BB. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, hey, he didn't have BBs lodged in his body. He had actual bullets. That was a Philly guy. I think Russell Peltz. How had about him. how about Lou Deval? Honey, Honey boy, Honey boy yeah. out of the Bronx, yeah. and it, and Lou's sister could fight too. She could really she fight, good. and Lou's sister went out with Roy. That's right. Yeah. A little bit, a little yeah. Connection there, yeah. <laughs> he was. Was, uh, was he? I think her name well, was. Well, uh, okay. So, what's the distinction of um, Del Val's fight with Roy? I mean, Roy won by lopsided decision. Didn't he knock him down once? Del Val oh. dropped Roy. I remember. It was a real knockdown. I remember too. Lou Val. And you know what? Del Val was also a southpaw. We had, you know what, right, Southpaw, South I South always South. wanted to see yep. Roy fight as a professional, was Frankie Lyles. Because right, sure. I knew they had a rivalry in the amateurs. Yeah. And Frankie was such a smart technical Frankie boxer. had a run-in with uh, Devon and drugs and stuff like oh, that. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Remember Frankie's when he got arrested? Yeah. Okay, no. how about this guy? <laughs> yeah. But I don't, I, don't, I don't doubt you. I believe it. Yeah. Okay, you know this. Uh, Glenn Johnson. He has uh, two nicknames. He has two. One was one gentleman, yeah, sure. and the other one was uh, Road Warrior. Yeah. Road Warrior. Glenn Cough. Okay. Johnson. Well, and on tough. that card, on that same card, oh, actually, on the card where uh, uh, the the uh, May fifteenth card, on the May fifteenth card when Roy got knocked out, Owen Beck fought. What the Owen, heck? what the heck, Beck? I was just gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. that one's easy to remember, one. right? Yeah. He was a heavyweight. Yeah, I remember that. He, it's weird. He was this dude. He, he didn't have a good. Did he ever spar with the Klitschkos? Owen Beck. Owen Beck. That doesn't sound familiar. Okay. No. Because he's he, one of them dudes who didn't have an athletic body, but he had like nice combinations. Huh. Like he was, who did he fight that night? Owen Beck. Owen on, Beck? The, on, on, wait, on the on the on the Jones Tarver two undercard? Yeah, because you were there. I was there, but I don't remember some of these the guys from St. Joseph, Missouri. He fought a guy from St. Joseph, Missouri, a heavyweight. Yeah. St. Joseph, Missouri. Must huh. have been kind of like a journeyman type. Yeah, he was. And. Ed Scott is his name Scott. Bay and Poli. Who? Bay and Poli. Poli. Brian. Brian, Brian Poli. Oh yeah. yeah. Roly Poli. That should be his nickname. It should be Roly. Ed Mahone was from St. Louis. Yeah, Ed the Hammer. The Hammer. Yeah. The Hammer. Who was his well, he could he could take a shot, couldn't he? Hey, Ed Mahone. Ed for a while. Remember, remember that fight against oh, yeah. Cody Cook and uh, Cody Cook. I bet on Cody Cook. Cody. The Alaskan, Alaskan assassin. Alaskan. I bet yeah. On him. And it was a big hey, underdog. Hey, that guy could box. He, he was, was a big underdog, but he it, it was a very close out, fight. Yeah, he was winning the fight, and then Ed pulled out the hammer in the 11th round. Ed was tough. Did you show him a picture of his grandfather or something? I got Ed the uh, Telly Klitschko fight. That's how I met the Telly. That's how I met the Klitschko. It was through Ed Mahone. Yeah. Flying to Germany over there in Oberhausen. See, the Klitschkos didn't look at you as the enemy just because you were bringing an opponent, you know. Right. Well, because I worked with Muhammad Ali, and, and yeah. through Ali, Vitaly came over, met Ali, and then you know, then, then we started a friendship. That's good. Yeah. Did they meet Sandy That's an incredible story. also? That's a... uh, I don't know if they were they were at the office at the same time. Sandy Do you still was there. talk to Kofex? So Sandy's in in Florida. Harlan yeah. Harlan uh, Winter talks to Sandy, but uh, I met him a few times. Nice guy, really nice guy. But he's become kind of he's, reclusive now. He, yeah. He's kind of pulled back from the spotlight. He's like Marvin Hagler. He's got a mystique. I met Joe Namath, and Joe Namath was signing footballs, and once he signed it, he threw them to me, and I was, like, stacking them up. <laughs> that's pretty cool. That was cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, Is that yeah. your claim to fame? That was yes. pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that not bad. Cool. You got a few more, Coach, before I we wrap it, up? Yeah. How about, uh, uh, how about Glenn Thomas? Glenn Thomas. The Wolf. 
<laughs> the big bad wolf? The promise. The promise. Oh, the promise. Glenn Thomas, the promise. Thomas, the promise. Okay, how about this one? I know. Oh, there's another guy named Glenn. Okay. The, no, he fought another guy play. named yeah. Glenn. Yeah. Uh, who was also had an incredible record. I think that's a, the guy he fought the day he played basketball. Oh, Eric Lucas. Eric Lucas. Was the, the, the yeah, when oh, he fought oh, when he Eric played Lucas. basketball. You know, I know that because Kevin Kelly versus uh, Derek Gaynor was on that show. Wow. When uh, Kevin, Stole the show. Kevin knocked him out. Okay, yeah. so what's With a Anthony closed eye. Hanshaw's uh, yeah. nickname? Anthony Hanshaw. Anthony. Oh, I remember Anthony Hanshaw. Yeah. Something like uh, T something. You got it. Yeah, something the, like The Tiger, and how do you spell Tiger? The Tiger. With a Y? Yeah. That's how you got it, too. Yeah, because John David Jackson sparred with... Roy Jones because the Eric Lucas fight when I was down there and oh. Kevin fought on that uh, on that wow. show. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know John David Jackson sparred with Roy Jones. I thought so. Yeah. He was involved there somehow. And I remember then then he wound up fighting uh, uh, He fought Castro. Got knocked out. Jorge right Castro. Right at the he end. was beating the yeah. hell out of Castro. Wow. Oh no, John fought Bernard Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. yeah. But I think he sparred with Roy because uh, Eric yeah. Lucas was a softball. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So we were down there in Florida, yeah. and John was down there, and he was sparring with uh, Roy. And, that and, was uh, when when John was wrapping up his own career and was just starting to train yep. or consider training. Right. You know, this one. It's Tony, a long road. Tony Thornton. T oh, oh the, the punching mailman. Yeah. Yeah. Know, that, I'm thinking of Tony. Punching, punching postman, yeah. Punching postman? Yeah. Oh, he fought a mail, he, and he fought a policeman, too. He did, yeah. <laughs> he did. Uh, the postman and the teacher. Wait, who was Otis that? Grant was the teacher. That's yeah, right. Otis the postman Grant. was Ricky Frazier, right? Frazier. No, not Ricky Frazier. Ricky, no. Ricky something. Rick. He was uh, he was managed by Grant Elvis. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Remember Elvis it? got him that fight. Yeah, it was. And not I remember good, HBO though. paid a lot of money for that fight. Oh, the normal license fee, and that was like easy money for Roy. Oh no, I mean it was. HBO wasn't. proved very. Uh, shallow opponents, I guess, for uh, Roy at that time. That's, that yeah. might be. Uh, yeah, but he, he had a great deal. Yeah. He deserved it. You know that name sounds familiar. Ricky Ricky Frazier might have been the right name. Well, there's a there's a there's a Ricky Frazier who uh, was a, a junior uh, middleweight, and he's the guy that Winky Wright beat for the IBF title. Uh, oh no, Ricky Frazier is that guy that, that Roy fought. The, 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 but there's a a Frazier that um, Winky Wright beat, whose nickname was Push Up because oh, he, okay. he would win Push Up contests. Oh, okay. Something Push Up Frazier. How about oh, Glenn Wolf? That's the big bad wolf. Big bad yeah. wolf. Big bad? Bad. You yeah, got it. big bad wolf. Big and bad. I think he took him out in one round. He did. That other Glenn lasted some rounds with Roy, and that was on USA Tuesday Night Fights. I loved watching Roy on Tuesday Night Fights, man. And Obacar he, had actually, a lot of... he actually fought Jorge Castro on Tuesday Night oh, Fights. Yeah. Two, that's two a great... future middleweight champions. Yeah, that's a great. Uh... And Jorge went the distance because Jorge could take yeah, anybody's punch. He had a big. In fact, champion. I think Roy. Damaged his hand, damaged his right hand, nailing that little. See, uh, John David had Castro cut up a lot worse than uh, Roy did at the he time. He did. Yeah. He yeah. really put it on him. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Terry Norris chopped up Castro a lot oh, worse yeah. than Roy did. Yeah. All right. Roy was a little freaked out that the dude could take his best shot early. And and and, not... then, and then come forward, and so Roy would back up oh. and just cover up and just turn. Because Castro he, was throwing punches like this. Think he went like through this. a growth, growth spurt? It happens. That, that happened to me one summer. I wake up and I pull my pants pants up and they're like this. And I'm like, Mom, you shrank my pants. And like, no, Doug, you're growing. Like, oh, about time. <laughs> oh, you said she shrank them in and the washer. one summer in the washer. I went from five, I, I went from uh, five, four and a half or five, five to five foot eight. Wow, four over inches. one summer. That's Just a, a big, big growth spurt. spurt. Yeah, that was... That was between my freshman year and my sophomore year. Hmm. Thank God. I was like, I don't want to be a short guy. All right, we should wrap up, Coach. Small enough as it is. Any last uh, words of wisdom? So how do you feel to be fully vaccinated now? I'm at peace. Uh, that feels and you drive very calm now? He always Calmer drives. than always. Let everyone in, like, in the lanes. No, you That's the way really to be. Watch it. The drivers are so bad right now. It's crazy. They're out of practice, I think. Now the traffic's starting up yeah, again. And if they, if there's like a clear, if there's like a mile worth of, of, of open highway, everyone revs up to like 90 to go, miles per hour. Go, uh, and, and then they, they have to slam on the brakes. And they all come to a screeching halt. Yeah. Right. yeah exactly.
and then they, and then they're creeping for a while. Then it opens up just briefly, and they all hit ninety again. I'm like, guys, just chill. Everything's open, and the sushi place oh, I go to was pinged out twice last week. Uh -oh. We got the scooters. Totally. The scooters are up. So we're gonna we're gonna watch our eating. Gotta really watch you. I eat drink so more water much this week. I mean, What's I the next fight you're gonna go to, Doug? Um, you know, I wanted to go to the Taylor um, Ramirez unification showdown at 140 pounds. That's gonna be a good I, fight. But I forgot to submit my credential. Huh. I, like I reached that fight. out to Evan Corn. I mean, he's wait, like, wait, Doug, wait. this deadline passed way a long time ago. Uh, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm out of this kid. Is good. Look at him. Oh wow. Little stunt man. Yeah, Jake. Good. Wow. Look at him. Yeah, he's aggressive. Man. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, hey, That's gonna be a good fight. What's your prediction on that fight? I'm going with the Scotsman by a uh, closer majority decision. I saw Josh Taylor up close, you know, up front close uh, when he fought uh, Ryan Martin, and yeah. uh, he's impressive. Here's what I like about Definitely the Scotsman. He can, he's a southpaw, he can box from the outside, he can bring it inside, yeah. he can switch hit, and he goes to the body really well when he's yeah, inside, but then he backs out, yeah. backs out again. And fast hands, too. Fast hands, yeah. fast feet. Right. Where, where is that fight? Uh, the, what, what used to be the Hard Rock. Oh, in, casino. In, uh, I think it's called the Virgin. Up in Vegas. Oh, yeah, that, Virgin Hotel Casino. That's uh, the Virgin. Where yeah, the hard rock. I think huh. it's where the you Hard know, Rock that's used to the one, be. That's the greatest hotel. I love it. Yeah, oh, I used to love God. staying there. I used to go uh, seeing fights there. And hmm. the joint. The joint. The joint. Yeah, yeah. nice that's, small that's, venue. I like yeah. that venue Perfect. too. Yeah, yeah so um, been to it was going to be that Tom, but I missed it. I'm 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 debating whether or not I go to Vegas for Haney versus Linares. Okay. Um, if I don't travel this month, I'm definitely going to travel to see the monster, Iowa in a way. In a way, right? Take okay. on whoever he's fighting. Where's that? I think that's at the Mandalay Bay. What's oh, your... No, no, maybe that's at the Virgin too. <clears throat> well, the Virgin. Yeah, I, I want to check out the Virgin. What's your prediction on Haney Lenars? I'm going with the upset. I'm going with the old no, man. I think Jorge Lenares are, does it. People are, yeah, I don't think Haney hits hard enough to shake him. And he's motivated, and he's been, you know, he's the been in Lenar training. side are pretty confident. Too. Yeah. Well, he just has to be able to get warmed up, and once some combinations start flowing, the young man's going to be like, holy be a, crap, I'm in with a real fight. dude. But uh, Haney's, Devin's a huge favorite. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, no, I would, I would, I would bet Linares because there's great value on that. At least bet, I'm, I'm betting it, it goes the distance. <laughs> I don't think Haney can knock out Linares. Do you bet as much as JP? No, I would never do that. <laughs> So JP is the, the leader there. But okay. I admire that. We're going to Because everybody off. in the whole world's got an opinion and they talk all yeah. this crap. No, and he, and he, then when they're right, they like beat their chest. I'm right. like, and when Yo, they're wrong, if you're they so never, confident, they never, put some money on it. Yeah. Like Mayweather. So there you JP, go. JP Post is a uh, fix ahead of yeah. time. All right, we're going to sign off, coach. Okay. All right. All right, Doug. We'll see you later. Later, everybody. And, and uh, don't miss the Marvin Hagler issue and the Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson. Issue. Two, issue. two great issues of the Ring magazine. Yep. If we you, got some you, good stuff coming up. If you didn't get it, uh, order that online. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. What's? Uh, can you say anything about a uh, upcoming uh, issue? Well, hopefully. Can you tease it a little hopefully, bit? Fury Joshua. Fury Joshua. <laughs> that, that better be on the cover. Be if, if we can't get that fight done, then you know what? We might as well embrace Mayweather versus the Paul brothers. That's true. We those, might as well embrace celebrity done. boxing because yeah, right. we can't get it done. That's the right. big, the, the big time boxing. So. Right, Fingers crossed. Up. Fury Joshua. Right. Okay. We'll see you, everyone.